So in this one, we're going to look at how we can add a menu to our UI that we can use to load impulse responses into the convolution reverb effect inside highs. So I've got a project on my desktop and this is the project folder. And in here, inside the audio files folder, I have a few impulse responses. So these are the ones we're going to have appear in the drop down menu. So it's important that when you're using impulse responses in highs, they all go inside the audio files folder of your project. So on our UI, we'll start by adding a combo box. We'll rename this to CMB IR. And we'll zoom in on that a bit and let's grab a reference to that. So right click, create script variable definition. We'll add a comment here and then we'll paste that definition in. We're also going to need a control callback. So again, we'll just use the built-in system to um, create that for us and paste that in there. We're also going to need to add a convolution reverb to our project. So let's do that, convolution reverb. And we need to get a reference to this. And it's important that the reference we get is the audio sample script reference. So we don't want the generic reference. We want the audio sample one. And I'll paste that up at the top here. Let's just zoom out a bit so we can see a bit more there. Let's change the default text of our combo box. Instead of it saying text uh, CMB IR, we'll change that to load impulse. So that's just the default text that's going to appear there when nothing's selected. Now we need to get a list of all the audio files. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to do this at the top of the script, we'll do it here. We're going to write const irs equals engine dot load audio files into pool. And this will sort of preload all the audio files into highs. So highs is aware of them. And it will also populate this um, variable with an array with all the names. And we can see that if we hit F5 and have a look in the script watch table, So we can see it just populates them with the file names and this is the project folder wildcard. So that's so highs can figure out where the files actually are. It doesn't use the full path. It just uses this wildcard and then it knows that they're inside the project folders audio files directory. Okay. So we're going to use this list here to populate our combo box. So we'll bring our combo box back there and let's make a bit more room. So we're going to first of all, clear anything that's already in, in the combo boxes items um, list here. So to do that, we're going to write the name of our combo box. We're going to write set items, and then we're just going to put an empty string. So it will always be cleared out at this point here. Now we're going to loop through all of the impulse response file names that are in this IRs array, and we're going to add them to our combo box. All right, for x in irs, cmb add item, and then we can just put x there, but I'll show you what that looks like if I hit F5. So that gives us a full path, but we only really want to have the name. We don't want this project folder thing, and we don't want the dot wave on the end. So to get rid of those, we'll use the replace command on this x variable. So all right, dot replace project folder. And then we can just chain on another replace here and put dot wav and that will clear that out. Okay. So now when we change the selection in this combo box, it's going to trigger our combo box callback. So let's see the value we're getting there. So if I go to room, it's four, if I go to hall, it's two. And if I go to the first value, it's a one. So this is different to how an array works. When you have an array, the first index is zero. So you've got to remember that the first value of a combo box is one. The first index of an array is zero. So if we're going to use the combo box value to index our IRs array, we need to subtract one from the value. So what we're going to write in here is if value is greater than zero. So the user must have selected something. It's not just on that default text um, that we set to load impulse. The user has selected an item. We're going to take our convolution reverb. 
we're going to call set file. And then the, the file that we want, we're going to get from our IRs array. So IRs, and then the index we're going to use is the value minus one. And we'll hit F5 on that. Okay, and if everything's gone well, that should be all there is to it. So, yep, there we go, just loading the theater one. Arena, room, hall. And this will be saved with user presets because we have save and preset enabled. So you don't need to do anything extra to get this to store and restore with presets. Okay, and that's all there is to it. It's a really simple process once you know how to do it. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below the video. And of course, I'll get back to you. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe and share it with anybody you think might be interested. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.